Hey everybody, we haven't made a video in a while on Titus's Opal GT here, so um, we thought we'd uh, get it out. The weather's a little warmer now than it was when we got the car and you know, went through some cooler times, but um, spring's here, it's getting warm, it's time to get back on the Opal. So the first thing we're going to do here is, one of the big problems this car has besides the gas tank <clears throat> is uh, uh, brakes. It really doesn't have any brakes. Uh, when we, uh, it might have them if you could get the pedal to the floor, which you can't. Uh, when we got the car, the rear two brake uh, drums were sealed or frozen solid. Uh, you could not uh, get it to move at all. So we ended up actually to get it out of that uh, barn. We took it out of that shed. We took it out of. We actually had to remove uh, the the rear uh, passenger side uh, drum <clears throat> and put the tire back on to get it to roll because it was pretty locked up. Uh, you cannot push the pedal to the floor at all. It will not move. It is solid and frozen, and so. Uh, uh, and you got a solid brake light on on the dash. <clears throat> so, first thing we're going to do, we bought everything we needed to do everything. <clears throat> Just short of lines. We did not buy brake lines. We're going to evaluate those as we get into to them. But uh, we bought all new uh, rotors and we bought uh, caliper uh, rebuild kit. We bought uh, rear wheel cylinders and we bought brakes all around. The hoses, the rubber hoses, brake hoses we bought. Um, we basically got most everything. The master cylinder, obviously, is going to need some work. Um, we didn't buy a new one, but we did buy a rebuild kit from Old GT Source. So we're going to try to, uh, today, uh, the, the task at hand is to get that master cylinder out of there and rebuild it, see if we can get it working again. So that's it. Let's get to it. Okay. We got it off. Uh, and the brake pedal pushes now, which is a good thing. Needs more of these. So we got to try to get the um, next the um, reservoir off there without damaging it. That can be a little tricky. So we definitely don't want to break anything, do we? Alright, so let's see. It wasn't pushing in at all. Let's do the vice test. Crank that thing all the way up and we'll see if this thing pushes in. Look how look how rusty the end of that is. It's like completely rusted around there. Pretty badly, so I don't know. That could be why it's not pushing anymore. It just rusted out too much. Crazy. Oh, I don't think you can get it out that far. Just crank it back in there. Well, we know what we're up against. Oh! <laughs> hey, it gave way. <laughs> Look at that. I got my shirt. It didn't get me. Well, you're lucky. It gave way, but you know we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it all over anyway. But well, good. It's it's still good. Chances are good. Then the cylinder in there is good. Boy, it's sure rusty through here though. Hmm. And it, it could have been that it just wouldn't push down because there was so much hydraulic pressure on the system from everything else being shot. All right, let's see if we can get this apart without damaging anything. Look, it's coming right out of there. That's good. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. And now it's bleeding. It's bleeding. Take this side out. Actually, I think last time I just... Look at all that muck in there. You see that? Super afraid to put too much force on these things. Whoop. <laughs> Come on. 
come on. Ah, I got it. <laughs> Sheesh. All right. It's off. Brake fluid everywhere. I think we're gonna need another set of gloves. Yeah, give me a couple of better, better uh, up there. Mm -hmm. Give me some more shop time. Okay, that's off. So all we can do is here is clean this thing up. Um, I don't think we got any problems with that hose, but this will be cleaned. They've just painted over part of it apparently. Okay, so let's get in your car and see if we can find the components for this rebuild. This looks in really good shape, actually, better than I thought. And one of the things we got to do is we're going to pull this. Uh, we're going to try to pull the switch out here, the pressure switch, and uh, we might not need to, but I think I'd rather do that and see. So let's let's pull that out. Pressure switch. That O ring don't look bad either. I might have another one I could use of it. Here's the pressure switch. And we gotta get these things here out. What? Wires, huh? Alright, did you find those components? No, not what I'm looking for. <laughs> Found the box. All right, we got we got one of the little rubber things out. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit more so you can see what we're doing over here. All right, let's see if we can take this other one out. We should have a new set of these with the kit. Oh yeah, this one's really cracked all over the place. Did you find it? I don't know, I'm just kind of things out. <laughs> Alright. You can see that it's, it's even got German on it. You see that there? New old stock ATS, which would have been what came off of it. I'm not going to open that just yet. So, let's take this back down here. Angle the camera down here so I can see what we're doing. So, um, I cleaned it off with some parts cleaner, and you know what? It looks pretty darn good. Might not even need a rebuild, but we're going to do it anyway. I think it's sweet. Yeah. Now this thing's under pressure, so we're probably gonna have to put a clamp on this to hold it in a little bit, then take the spring clip off uh, with some spring pliers, and then ease it off. And I think what I'll use is this uh, really big uh, clamp to do this. So let's put this back in the box. Okay, and then now 
There it goes, peeing everywhere. Boy, the end of that's so big though, I, there's no way for me to get in there. Oh, maybe I can get it like right there. All right. Find my snap ring pliers. This is separating, I need to go the other way. Okay, here we go again. Can the camera see us? Mm-hmm. All right, we got it out of there. Now, is this gonna come out without crashing? <laughs> yep, no problem. All right, it's out. All right, now, we gotta make sure we pay attention to what comes out in water water. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, we may have trouble getting any of it out at all. Come on, you. There you go. Come on. Come on, you. Get yourself out of there. Man, oh man. That's definitely going to dog us every step of the way. You know, it could be that these things are holding it in. These screws here. These little screws could be holding it in. Again, that should just hold the front piston from coming out. So I don't know how strong this is. So let's see. Hmm. Okay. So that. Come on. Come out of there. Here it comes. Here it comes. Turn that up a little bit more. This should take the front section out. Here it comes. <laughs> it's always brake fluid everywhere. Alright, here we are. There's the front end. Right there. Hey, they can't even see that. Tilt the camera down. Well, not that far. <laughs> There we go. So we're going to remember how this all comes apart and goes back together. Otherwise, we'll be lost. But there it is. We took out the first part of it. We'll just set this here. Now, shoot it back up here again. We should uh, be able to take the back end out now. And the other side of it should come out. I hope it comes out in the right order. It comes out in the right order. Oh, I don't think it'd come out in the wrong order. I never know. I'm not real sure how to get this out, but we can't lose these little things. Okay, what do we got in there? The other half. <laughs> it's the other half, all right. I'm not real sure how it's supposed to come out of there. 
<laughs> Might just <clears throat> pee out of there. And here comes the back half. All right, there's the back half. That whole thing there makes the whole kit. And we'll have new rubber bushings and things, but for now we're going to set this aside over here just so that we don't forget how we took it apart. And I think I'm going to clean up a little bit here. Put that in. They don't look too bad. I think it looks pretty nice, actually. I was hoping I wouldn't have to hone it out or anything. And I don't think I will. I think it looks really, really decent in there. I don't know until I get a flashlight, though. There's one coming. I've got a seal around here too. That doesn't look too good. We're gonna, hopefully there's one of those in the kit. So one thing I noticed is there's this groove in here where something goes. And it is pretty rusty so I'll clean that out a little bit. Get that rusty goodness out of there. Hmm. You guys can see okay, carrot. Right? And we also got this little snap ring groove that isn't the greatest. Uh, we'll see what that looks like. It might come with a new snap ring too. If not, I have a kit of them over there. Hopefully one of them works if that doesn't work in here. All right, let's spray it out and take a look down the middle. All right, turn that thing on. Let's take a look in there. It looks super clean in there. Really nice. I don't know if you can see that in there, but yeah, it looks really good. No scoring or anything on the side or corrosion or anything where water's gotten in there. It's stayed pretty, pretty pure all these years, so we're not going to have to hone it or anything, which is good. We'll just do a refresh on the rubber parts. And... <clears throat> So the outside of this don't look too bad either, really. Looks pretty nice. Um, we'll probably, I'm gonna wire wheel this up. Let's see what's in the kit here. It should come with all new pieces. There's the rubber pieces for the reservoir. There's some pieces, uh, there's a new, a new snap ring. Mm -hmm. And the washer that goes with it looks good. Here's the pistons, two pistons, some rubber seals, and most importantly, the instructions. We have to have the, the instructions. And it's in German. Uh, there we go. The old instructions. We don't need those. <laughs> Are you sure it's not German? Yeah, it's got different languages. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, angle this down a little bit so they can see. I just uh, zoomed out all the way. I guess it is. It is. Okay, scoot that up a little bit. So, so we got a brand new piston here with a washer. That's nice. 
Uh, here's the front piston. <coughs> Look at that. That looks brand new with the copper brass washer on the back. Good, good. Uh, we got a new rubber o ring. A couple of those. Yeah, I think we got it all. So let's try to take this thing out. This is a really bad rubber o ring. That needs to be removed. Here it goes. Don't need that. <coughs> so I think I'm going to take this over the wire wheel and we're going to clean all this surfaces up here. And I may just go ahead and hit the rest of it real, real lightly with the wire wheel. And we might throw a coat of black paint on it after we clean it off again. Got to make sure I don't get any in there. We'll have to plug those up or something. But we'll do that. Do its thing. I really don't like the fact that it's got this rusty spot in here. <coughs> I'm gonna go I to wish work. there was a way to smooth that out. Oh, you're going to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I guess we got to let it dry now. So. Uh, I'm gonna paint it. Okay. What are you doing? Alright, I'm just I'm gonna scrape out this little area here. We've cleaned it up pretty good, as you can see. But inside here, there's a rubber seal that goes on here. It seals the booster uh, to it, and we got some pretty rusty surface around here. I'm going to try to flatten it out a little bit with this screwdriver and get this surface rust out. Hopefully it'll make a better airtight seal once we get it back together. Probably run a little sandpaper in here too just to smooth it out. in there. See if I can find some paper. Little sound they'd leave. Hmm, that's helping. Quite a bit actually. I always say use the right tool for the job, but is there such thing as a right sandpaper for the job? This came off an orbital. Yeah, I think this will seal it pretty well. Getting all that gnarly surface rust off of there. Alright, we're back here. <clears throat> so, um, we laid out all the parts here. The master cylinder is drying right now. We painted it, cleaned it up. And so here's the new pieces, see, and here's the old ones. What I don't understand is this, Titus, look at this. Yeah, this has got one big rubber piece here, see there? Mm -hmm. Looks like one piece of rubber. Is it two? Uh, no, it isn't, it's one big piece of rubber. But I don't have that in the kit. I got two of these. I don't know if they're supposed to be put back to back to simulate that. I don't know. He might be improvising a little bit. <laughs> All right, we need a little bright fluid. Something to douse these things in. And I'm not. Yeah, you know, we may reuse these metal pieces. I don't know if that's a bad idea or not. 
I'm not too worried. It's just your brakes and not mine. <laughs> I'm just yeah, it's that they go out, I just crash into something. Yeah, it's no big deal. No, <laughs> no, no. I, no, it'll be okay. It's just uh, these look a lot flimsier to me in the first place. Look at that. I don't get where they're supposed to go, but I might have these backwards. They might be. They look identical, though. Okay, first things first, we're going to dip it in a little brake fluid and put them on here. This one goes here first. And you see how it flares out backwards? Mm -hmm. It's a little hard to get on. Mm -hmm. Helps get it on there. There we go. Also <laughs> makes it hard to keep a hold of. There we go. I got one of them on there. Now I gotta get this over like two things. And it goes the opposite direction. I'm gonna take this. Tire. There we go. Okay. Now I gotta get over one more of these lumps. Okay. There we go. All right. We got those on, don't we? This one should just slide on there. It just slides on there like that. All right, so far so good. That pretty much looks like the picture, right? <laughs> Except for the color. Hmm? Except for the color. Yeah. All right, so this comes off. And like I said, I'm very compelled to just reuse this metal piece. Well, we don't know. So I really know. don't see what purpose using this serves it doesn't look like it's a great replacement for that and it's just a piece of metal I mean what in the world could possibly go wrong so I'm gonna I'm gonna reuse it I'll just take it off there and reuse that piece the important part of the seals inside not these little metal clippy things all right there's one side that's pretty easy all right, we got another one of these. Yes, it does. It just easy. chinks the whole thing. This side is under tension, and a lot of it. Yeah, maybe not a lot, but enough of it. And I'm kind of worried that it's going to hurt me. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Springs have a tendency of flying off and they killing people. Tendency. This rubber here isn't, like I said, it, it's different. I don't know. It is different. All right, we're going to tighten this in here a little bit. There we go. Came right out of there. Okay. This one lost the little piece here in the end. So. Hmm. But I'm just going to keep it on there. Yes, I know. It goes out like that. And this goes like this. Mm. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, that's not gonna work right there. Stand back! We're just gonna put this in here lightly like that. Screw it in there. Twist my arm all the way back. eventually <clears throat> get it up to 100 miles an hour with the road good engine <laughs> right okay so now that one's on so far it's looking pretty good and then we got this and again I don't know about these uh, I don't understand this Hey everybody, we're back. It's actually a different day now. Um, thought I'd go ahead and lay the parts out here that we're putting into this master cylinder. We kind of dry fit things a little bit, just see how they went. And then I, I found this. Um, and this is something I should have looked for originally, initially. Um, Gil Wesson from uh, Opal GT Source. Anytime, the one thing I like about working or buying stuff off of Gil is that he always gives you everything you need to to put your project together. If he sells you something, you're going to get a sheet like this with technical information on, on how to put it together and what to do. And he always does that, and I appreciate it very much. It's great to, to be able to have these reference documents. I've tried to collect them as I order stuff. Uh, but you can see right here, if there's any question about how this thing goes back together, uh, he's got the whole uh, list here on how things go. Uh, for example, I was really confused about... Uh, uh, this uh, this large rubber bushing that was on the original uh, that we took apart and it goes right on this piece here somehow but I didn't get one of those in the ATS or AST kit uh, instead uh, I got I got these little things here and I thought how in the world are those supposed to happen well he's he's laid it out right here here's the here's the two two bushings uh, right there and they both go this direction so uh, with a plastic ring in the middle and then a couple of uh, washer stop rings on the outside so you know very helpful um, one place of question is right in here uh, because we have these strange little clips that um, uh, I guess I should pour one of these out here I wasn't ready with that but there's a couple of little clips in here that I don't understand uh, that kind of look like this and uh, uh, to my eye uh, uh, these these go right here he's showing two arrows pointing to one thing and it looks like it's the the thing that that goes on the end of the spring here and connects to the spring uh, but um, the the factory ones, as you can see right here, already have a spring clipped uh, washer deal on there that's that's hooked to the spring. And I think these are replacements for that, where you maybe take this uh, piece off and then this would snap inside of the spring on on these uh, snap points and and possibly do the exact same thing. Um, I don't know for certain, but I believe that's the way it goes uh, and then it kind of grips on and, and goes into those grommets so I don't know uh, I planned on not using it uh, and the reason being is that these ones that are on there from the factory uh, are still very good and they seem fine I don't really see a, a point in it uh, unless there's some concern about these crushing or something the, the rubber crushing um, but I don't I don't think it can because it's got a piece of metal in there so I'm planning on not using those um, for this application but but anyway um, very well laid out and so we're gonna use this guideline to know how to put these things back together uh, so we're gonna start with that also uh, I should say they I failed to mention this there's there's actually a full text sheet on the master cylinder rebuild kit too uh, so everything you need is right here and it maps out all the steps you need to uh, uh, to put it back together with those parts, not just the diagram. So that's a good thing to have. Okay, so we're going to start putting this thing together. Um, first thing I want to do is take the components and get them wet. Now I've already put a little bit of uh, brake fluid inside of the cylinder. I have a jar here, or a 
Pyrex dish full of brake fluid. We want to make sure we get these components a little moist before we stick them in there. So we're just going to put these in here. Put the back first. This is the, the, the rear uh, brakes uh, compartment in there, if you will, or the zone for the rear brakes. And it just slides right in there. And if you got those in there right, uh, then it'll go right. And keep in mind, once you put these together, as I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure you've put these rubber seals on facing the, the right direction. They flare out, and you want to make sure you've got them oriented exactly how those instructions say to do it. Now, there's two set screws here, and I found that the rear one doesn't really do much. It goes in here, uh, and it, it doesn't really accomplish anything. It doesn't go into the cylinder, really. Um, it's kind of just sealed there. We'll tighten that down just a little bit. All right, so first of all, I need a uh, piece of wood. Let me find one real quick, and I'll come right back. Okay. So, after I've got the first one in there, we're going to use a, a dowel rod to push it in all the way. And really what we want to do is get it past this uh, position here, so that we can put this in and hold it in place. And I think I about got it. You push it in there, screw this down, so it can't come back out. And there we go. So now it's, it's tight in there, and it's not going to come out anymore. Um, that's really what it does, is it holds it in place. I think I got it. All right, I'm back. So, and you really want that to go in there all the way, by the way. You, you want that that piston um, piece to go clear in there. So let me show you. Here. Let me pull the old one out here. But uh, as this goes inside, you want to make sure that this is beyond the screw. It's kind of holding that back in compressed, okay? Um, and I think you can see it if you uh, were to look down the center. You can see the little set screw in there sticking out. You see that? Uh, get that closer. You can see the pin in there kind of holding it in place. So it can't go anywhere. The little screw is. So we'll just tighten that down here. A little bit. It served its purpose. I don't have to go real tight. It's just holding it in. Okay. Get that out of the way before I get confused. Now we're going to put these in in the same in the right order that they've mentioned in the documentation. We'll get this a little bit wet. And we'll stick him in there next. All right. Gets a little tricky after this. So you can see these components go in in this order. Uh, again, I gotta, I gotta refer to the documentation here uh, and see what order these go in. I'll turn it your direction so you can see. Uh, if you can see this. Uh -oh. Okay. All right. So over here, it kind of describes it. <clears throat> so the first thing we need to do is put a washer in there. So this goes on first. Like that. Now, I don't have a really good way of doing this other than maybe using a, a socket. I suggest. And so we'll push that in. And then the next piece is one of these rubber grommets. So these go cupped this way. Got a fuzzball there. Cupped this way, let's get a little brake fluid on it so it goes on easier. Goes on this direction. Just like that. And then we're going to use our little 13 millimeter socket to hopefully get it in there farther. Whoa. Maybe. It's a little bit tight. A little bit tight. So I'm just going to run this around the edge a little bit. Because I'm getting in that snap ring hole, I think. Just to get it down in there a little deeper. I'm being careful not to mar the surface of that suction area. There we go. Alright, that's in there. See if we can push that in there a little farther. I believe I can. All right. Now, we're going to use this plastic. We'll put this little plastic ring in there. Whoopsie. See if he goes in there right. And he is going in there right. He's going to have to go in farther than that. He's wanting to 
come back out. What do I do? Okay, and then we put another one of these on. Uh, again, get it wet. And it goes on the same direction. You can see it goes on the same direction as the previous one. Just like this. And again, it's not the easiest thing to get on here. <laughs> Alright, I think I got it in there far enough. It's hard to see. You gotta be very careful not to damage the rubber seal. Then we put this last ring on here, like this. And then I think we're about ready to put the snap ring on there. <clears throat> we'll have to squash it down just a little bit. I haven't quite got it in there all the way again. So we'll press that just a little bit in there. <clears throat> uh, again, it's a tight one. All right. Okay. According to the instructions, we don't have to compress it. I just had to get that rubber seal in there better, and I kind of carefully used some tools here, like a screwdriver, gently, <laughs> to get it in there. So now we're going to try to put on this snap ring, and then we're going to try to push that snap ring in until it snaps uh, into the grooves. Um, so let's get the snap ring in there. Okay, it's part way in. Oh, 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 you little dog. Let's see here. Let's try that again. <laughs> it's tricky. This little thing is tricky. Get in the groove there without it popping out everywhere else. Oh, there it is. So that really wasn't very difficult at all. I thought it was going to be tough to get in there, but it all fit together. And it would appear that everything's in the groove as it's supposed to be. All right, that wasn't hard. I was making it more difficult than it needed to be. So now this thing should, and it does. It's all fixed up and ready to go. All right. That's really all there is to that. So next we now got to clean up the um, the brake warning light uh, pressure fitting uh, and put that in there. And I'm not sure how this works. Maybe you can comment in the description. But um, I tested this out and basically I checked for continuity between uh, this uh, contact here and the ground here, uh, the threaded part. And basically you've got a lot of resistance when it's open like that. Okay, so it's not going to do anything. When you push that in, the resistance goes away and you've got continuity and it'll light up the light on your dash telling you've got a brake problem. And I think the way it works um, is utilizing this, this lower uh, reservoir down here uh, in the bottom of the cylinder. And I think it, it expects to have an equal amount of pressure in there. And when one side has more or less pressure than the other, that's when that, uh, uh, that uh, sensor gets tripped and turns the light on in your dash. Anyway. I'm going to turn that off and then we'll work on the reservoir. Now we get to put the reservoir back on. The way I've done this in the past, I'm not sure if this is the right way or not, but the way I've done this in the past is I put these in first and then snap the reservoir in. Hopefully that works this time. <laughs> because uh, last time I did it, um, I think I tried both ways and both ways were a pain. I had trouble getting it snapped in place, but it seemed to me like putting the rubber in the reservoir in the uh, orifice first um, made more sense. Uh, I think it kind of gets smashed a little bit when you put it in there, so that's where it gets a little tricky. Uh, let me grab the reservoir. It's over here. You can't see me. <clears throat> and here it is. I've cleaned it up about as best as I can. Put it in some really hot soapy water. Um, everything else seemed very good on it. So, all right. Again, I'm going to put this in some brake fluid and get it wet and slippery so that it has a sporting chance of going into this orifice and going in smoothly. Ha ha ha. There we go. That side's in and then 
here's the the other one for the the rear well the rear brakes all right it's in now we gotta do the same thing put a little bit on the um, the outlets and we gotta push this on all right this one here looks like it'd be the hard one to put in let's see yeah it doesn't want to go on there let's pop that up just a little bit Yeah, this is probably the one I had trouble with before. <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. All right, we're going to take that uh, off of the hose. See if we can get this in here. Okay, here it is guys. It's all put together. Uh, this was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be <laughs> putting that in there. I went ahead and cleaned up the uh, switch as you can see right here. I uh, put that in there and so it uh, is ready to go. And then last thing I did was put a new rubber seal uh, around the perimeter of this. There's a new seal there between the brake booster and the unit. And so it's all done. It's all ready to go back in the car. And uh, so uh, we're going to uh, Probably uh, come back uh, some other time. We'll already put this in the car. So we'll get back to you.